Hello everyone, my name is Aman Kumar from MinusPointPro.com. So today in this video we are going to discuss about uh, technical part of the uh, Synergy exam for TME or Engine Cadet. So basically in the section A we have the uh, domain uh, sections where we have uh, questions related to uh, technical things related to main engine, auxiliary engine, etc. So in recent years we have seen a trend that uh, Synergy has been asking multiple questions based on cross-sectional diagrams of the engine parts or various other uh, things on the uh, on board. So in this uh, particular video is about uh, different cross-sectional diagrams uh, available on board, mostly of main engines. So without any delay, let's start with the figures. So the first figure is of main engine, which is having a pulse turbocharger. So you can see this is uh, having a pulse turbocharger. And the different parts of the main engine, you can see this is the bed plate, tank shaft, guides, charger, cooler. So this is the just a uh, turbocharging system. This is turbocharger, then air manifold. This is charger, cooler, scavenge ports. So you just uh, go through this uh, different diagrams and try to remember the different parts uh, because in synergy exams, you might give questions like uh, what you give this arrow and what is this part name so you have to name these parts so go with this uh, diagrams thoroughly so next is the same thing it is having the constant pressure uh, turbocharging system so in previous we have the uh, in the previous we have the pulse type turbocharger system in here we are having constant pressure turbocharging system and other parts are remaining same then this is a diagram of engine indicator so with this uh, indicator we can draw the indicator diagrams on the drums so this is the drum and mm, so this is the drum and uh, uh, this is the parallel link motion and here it is ink so whatever the light string diagram the indicator card diagram so these are all uh, encrypted on this drum and here the gas pressure comes from this side this is the spring this is the piston so just remember all these parts next is types of scavenging so we know that there are three types of scavenging in an engine so the first type of scavenging is a loop scavenging then cross scavenging then uniflow scavenging so just uh, go through the diagram so uh, here in the loop scavenging you see that the inlet and exhaust ports are on the same side of the cylinder and it is forming a loop the air forms a loop and come back again for the same side and in the cross scavenging it is uh, like uh, in the uh, inlet and exhaust ports are on the diametrically opposite ends then in uniflow scavenging we have the inlet port but we have for exhaust we have exhaust valve then next is turbocharger system so uh, in this in the turbocharger system we see that the this is the engine this is a cylinder so when in the exhaust uh, in the power in the exhaust stroke when the exhaust gas is expelled it is then transferred the exhaust gas is then transferred to the turbine so the turbine rotates and on the same shaft a compressor is mounted so we, that also rotates and it draws air from the surroundings and then this air is passed through charge air cooler so that the density of the uh, charge air can be reduced increased so that it can more number more amount of air can be fed into the system just remember the parts and then moving on to this is the diagram of turbocharger so this uh, seems a bit complex but you don't have to uh, draw these things you just have to remember uh, what all parts are and the parts you see are uh, very easy to remember like here you see the labyrinth plant this is the gas inlet exhaust then the diffuser and volute casing this is the here we have the thrust bearing this is the impeller then turbine nozzles so these are the this is a level pump so these are the basic things in which you need to understand because you don't have to draw you have to just remember the parts and in synergy it might ask that uh, what is this like for this, this in this arrow is given and what is this part for so you just go through this then we have charge air cooler so charge air cooler as we see it is used to increase the density of the air so that more amount of air more quantity of air can be fed into the cylinder so this is a cross-sectional diagram of 
charge air cooler so here it is sea water inlet and outlet and this this is the water tubes carrying the water which is used to cool and air is coming from this side and leaving the charge air cooler and these are the fins which helps in in efficient cooling and because of the increased surface area the cooling gets efficient here we have a seal just go through this diagram as well the next is exhaust bulb so uh, we know that exhaust bulb are, are of two types first is of push rod and tappet and there is a hydraulically operated so this is exhaust bulb with push rod and tappet clearance so we have also made a separate video on tappet clearance if you want to get knowledge about tappet clearance in detail you can watch that video also and uh, this is the just diagram this is the cam shaft follower the push rod and this is the valve rocker and here we have the tappet clearance and then uh, also if you are reading this so just go through this uh, technical terms that what happens when the tappet clearance is more what happens when tappet clearance is less so in, uh, this might help in technical questions as well these have these is the spring and then and this is the valve case and cooling water space so just go through this diagram and next we have the hydraulically operated exhaust valve so the function remains same instead of push rod and tappet we have this uh, cam is rotated the cam rotates and uh, push a uh, oil piston which in turn uh, supply oil to the actuator and then this uh, actuator because uh, pushes the valve spindle down and the valve opens so this is a simple uh, thing that simple working thing and that happens in hydraulically operated exhaust valve next we have the cylinder liner so in cylinder liner we see there is a bore cooling for the cooling then this is the water guide water space and these are the lubricating quills where the cylinder liner lubrication happens and this and this is the inlet ports Next we have the cylinder lubricating quill with accumulator. So in the previous diagram we see that there are quills for the lubrication of cylinder liner. So this is a quill will act with accumulator. So this uh, uh, what happens is that uh, when uh, in order to supply uh, the lubricating oil into the cylinder, uh, we we uh, there is an accumulator which uh, in which the oil is maintained at a certain predetermined pressure and uh, this is system is made in such a way that whenever in the cylinder liner the pressure becomes less than this accumulator pressure the oil will be discharged into the cylinder liner so uh, if in the pressure here is more if the pressure here is more and there is less so definitely oil will flow from more pressure to the low pressure So whenever uh, the temperature, whenever the pressure inside the cylinder liner falls below the set uh, pressure of the accumulator, uh, oil is transferred to the cylinder uh, in the uh, quills, and the cylinder is lubricated. Just go through this diagram as well. So there is nothing much to remember in that, I guess. But uh, you just have to uh, remember the parts. Now this is the piston rod gland and diaphragm. So uh, this uh, this is the diaphragm. This is piston rod. There is sealing arrangement, and this is the cross sectional diagrams of uh, the this piston area. So we can uh, you can see here the circumference in so uh, the garter springs, the packing ring segment. So these are uh, the things which can be asked. So just go through this diagram. Next is piston cooling. So in piston cooling, we have the this is basically a diagram of water cooled piston. So he, because we can, we can see here we having telescopic pipes. So in water cooled piston, we have a telescopic pipe so that uh, we can transfer uh, we can transfer the water to the piston crown. And with this help of telescopic pipe, this uh, water reaches to the, up to the piston crown. And with the help of these bore holes. And the cooling uh, happens to the piston and near the crown surface area also and then it returns back uh, again so just uh, remember these parts next is fuel injector so this is one of the most important part and i guess 
थ्री और फोर टाइम्स सिनर्जी हज आज क्रॉस सेक्शनल डायग्राम ऑफ फ्यूल इंजेक्टर सो बेसिकली फ्यूल इंजेक्टर आर ऑफ डिफरेंट टाइप्स सो दिस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज फ्यूल इंजेक्टर एंड यू कैन फाइंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फ्यूल इंजेक्टर डायग्राम्स ऑन द इंटरनेट यू कैन गो थ्रू इट एंड हेयर यू सी दिस इज द वाल बॉडी द स्प्रिंग एंड द ऑयल पैसेज द ऑयल कम्स फ्रॉम दिस इनलेट एंड गोज टू अप टिल हेयर एंड हेयर वी हैव द नीडल वाल एंड देन दिस इज द नट and this is cylinder cover and this and this is the here the nozzle is and this dowel so dowel is used to fix the fuel injector into the cylinder head and then this is the in, intermediate spindle and basically if you see this uh, part, this area is zoomed out here so oil inlet here and here we have the needle wall so when oil is supplied here from the presser this wall lifts up and the oil comes here and then because of this spring action you can see there is a spring so this in this valve has lift up so the spring is compressed now uh, as a tendency of the spring it will try to get relax so as soon as it relax and comes down the oil uh, stored here will be thrown out of this uh, atomizer holes with a pressure so that is how fuel injector works next is fuel pump with plunger and barrel and barrel arrangement so here you can see this is a complete figure and this is a start of uh, fuel delivery then this is the end of fuel delivery so in a pump uh, fuel pump with plunger and barrel so when the uh, start delivery uh, delivery of fuel starts so basically this uh, port starts uh, this port this you can see this helix port here so this uh, in this moves upward and the oil get compressed and the uh, oil move forward and as soon as this uh, helix port reaches to a uh, in uh, matches with this uh, uh, this ports so the pressure drops and the oil the pressure drops and the compression here what the oil was earlier getting compressed and transferred so now the pressure drops and the oil um, the oil supply stops so this is the end of fuel delivery so in the plunger type the uh, when we have to regulate the quantity so it is regulated by the vertical length of the helix so with the vertical length of the helix we can regulate the quantity of the fuel and it can be altered by rotating the plunger and the timing of this uh, plunger barrel can be controlled by relative angular position of the cam peak to the cam shaft and it can be adjusted by moving the cam with respect to the shaft so this is also important for a technical question uh, you should read i just highlighted this point you should just go through this and read more about it so that any question if comes from this you can answer that next we have the purifier so this is also asked many times in the synergy exam so uh, just remember the different parts of the purifier and especially pay attention to what are these uh, operating water this is the sealing water so these kind of Uh, these kinds of things are asked to more so uh, pay special attention and also uh, sealing water and operating water and these uh, terms are uh, important for the technical questions as well so just uh, be thorough with it and if you want uh, i guess there has been less time left but if you still you want you, i can make video separate video on that if you want just comment in the comment below and just remember all these different different parts in the top disc oil pairing disc the oil outlet this is the sliding bowl and also for uh, you should remember uh, this uh, difference between the purifier and clarifier as well then this is the diagram of the starting air system so sometimes line diagram has been also asked so that is why Uh, I have put this starting a system line diagram also just to go through it. Next we have the crankshaft. So uh, this these are the different parts of the crankshaft. Like this is the crank pin. This is the main journal. This is the hole for the lubrication of the main journal. These are the counter weights you can see, and this portion is the crank web. So you have to just analyze the things like. The, there's a difference between counter weight counter weight and wave so these are the waves and these are the counter weights which are put 
for the balancing of the crank shaft and these are the crank pins this is a refrigerator system so uh, in, in in that case if refrigeration system has been asked so you can answer that also just remember you know, what are the all processes being carried out and i have also made a separate video on refrigeration system you can get it on our channel also so if you want uh, to understand all of this process you can go and see that video also you will just get clarified and you don't have to actually remember if you remember what is happening in this whole process you will remember what are the parts and what is the process going on so you can easily uh, answer the questions so thank you that's it and uh, moreover because uh, i have tried to uh, inculcate more number of diagrams and uh, as far as I can and there are more number of diagrams also but uh, if you are preparing for synergy you have to go through it also and rest is uh, fine and if you want to get the study material I think you should not buy now because it has been almost late and there is no point of buying something so just uh, uh, go through uh, these uh, diagrams repeatedly and, and try to uh, remember all the parts because in synergy it you know, multiple times it has been asked the to identify the parts based on a cross-sectional diagram and moreover we have made many videos on the synergy diagram so go through it and if you find our videos helpful and if you find these questions some of the questions from our channel has come in your exam if you find those questions please do comment so that we can uh, improve our channel and if these these questions have not been helpful so that mention that also so that we can improve for the next year thank you